Hello everyone, this is Kumar here. I'm again back with another Wednesday Talks. Uh, this is a continuation video of the mainframe modernization topics. So this time it is on the DevOps. So I'll be giving in a quick introduction about the DevOps and uh, how it is used, where it is used. As uh, many of you might be hearing this word a lot from a couple of years and mostly many of them may be working and uh, many of them may not be working. So let me give you some overview of this. Okay. So what is DevOps? Right. So why this has come into the picture? Right. So if you recall, so when the IT industry or the software development has started, so they were having the traditional uh, approach of designing or developing an uh, an uh, application or I can say like software like right? so this uh, we used to call it as a SDLC uh, process right so it starts from uh, design planning designing developing or I can say like testing deploying and so on right so this has to go with the continuous step-by-step uh, -step process and which is a uh, time taking I, I can say like the time consuming as the day, days went on so several strategies or approaches came up and uh, the DevOps, I can say, like this is the modern approach that emphasizes uh, in collaborating and uh, continuous improvement. Okay. Yeah. So DevOps is a set of practices that focus on collaboration and communication between developers and the operation teams and uh, other stakeholders to deliver software more efficiently and reliably. And it it involves the various tools and practices to automate and streamline the software delivery process from planning and development to testing, deployment and the operation. What is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to enable faster and more frequent delivery of an high quality software that meets the need of users and the business, right? Okay, let me uh, explain uh, the sequence or hierarchy uh, that goes on when especially when a organization has decided to plan for the DevOps uh, approach right so the first thing is let's uh, I wanted to connect by taking some web application okay let me say you have one banking web applications or in a health insurance uh, web application that you wanted to have deploy which is in a scalable and automated way so then you have to use this devops practices okay the first thing that we use is like planning and tracking right so most of the organization nowadays they are using jira so to track the development task and prioritize them and assign to the uh, teams team members Right, so that is about the planning and tra tracking. So everything can be tracked, and um, it's it's easy to access. So when you're accessing the Jira or TFS or maybe the IBM RTC, so there are several different planning and tracking tools are available. Okay. So the next comes the version control and the collaboration. So so most of them uses Git, so as the version control system to manage the code changes, collaborate with other developers and uh, review their changes then comes the continuous integration part so what is this so they use a tool called as a jenkins uh, for the continuous in integration to build the code run automated test and deploy the application to your testing environment and the next the thing is the containerization so this is something called as they use a docker to package all these uh, containers uh, which with application that has the dependencies and uh, this can be deployed consistently across different en environment and then comes the orchestration they use kubernetes uh, as a container orchestration tool to manage the deployment and uh, scaling of uh, the containers to ensure uh, high availability of the application then comes the configuration management they use ansible and then comes the automation testing then uh, selenium uh, is used for automation testing and then they have monitoring uh, 
and then logging and analytics and the collaboration and communication they may use uh, uh, slack or microsoft teams so by using all these tools uh, and practices uh, they can achieve the faster and more reliable uh, software development delivery process i can say okay so don't worry uh, i'll go in detail about each of this so what are these and uh, how this is in the next uh, slides i'll cover in detail about this okay so but so these are the these are the specific pattern i can say that they would definitely follow so if if you are working in the devops approach or the devops model okay so it starts from planning and tracking what version control tools or collaboration how it is happening and what is the continuation integration tools that we are using what is the containerization orchestration the configuration management automated test cases i mean testing approach monitoring and uh, logging analytics and the collaboration communication so this is the sequence i can say okay so what are the key principles principles of these devops right so first is culture so definitely the the way you were working earlier and once the organization has decided to go with the devops approach there will be a drastic change in the culture and it is in the beginning it would be quite challenging but once you adopt to it so you i mean the work life will be different okay so so i can say like uh, the collaborative and the communication culture between the development and operations and other teams uh, will increase right so earlier then you may not be interacting with the operations team but uh, with this approach so all will be working together and uh, next is the automation using automation tools and technologies to streamline the software development and deployment process and we can easily measure it by collecting and analyzing data to measure and improve the software development life cycle and sharing so of course uh, encouraging knowledge sharing and collaborating across teams will definitely improve and that leads to more communication and efficiency and uh, continuous improvements obviously like continuous uh, uh, identifying cont you, you will be continuously identifying areas of improvement and implementing the changes to optimize the software development process so these are the things that definitely i can say like key principles of uh, De devops one is culture automation measurement sharing and the continuous improvement okay so you, you have said a lot so what what exactly how this automation is done right so automation uh, is done with this approaches like like having this continuous integration continuous delivery continuous deployment and uh, having this monitoring and feedback okay suppose uh, there is an a health insurance uh, project or the maintenance project and uh, they have like multiple teams working in it including developers testers and operations traditionally uh, these teams work in silos okay if they are following the traditional approach with little collaboration and manual hands off between them resulting in slow delivery times i can say and there may be a higher error rates and uh, obviously it will be an increase in cost so to address this challenge the organization has decided to implement the devops practices including automation so here is a simple example of how automation can be used the first thing is continuous integration the first developer writes the code and checks it into the source code repository let's say github the code is then automatically built and tested using a tool like jenkins this will ensure that the code is working as expected and any errors are caught early in the development cycle itself the next the continuous delivery once the code is built and tested it is automatically deployed to a test environment using a tools uh, like urban code deploy ibm and this allows the tester to validate the changes and provide feedback to the developers and the next the continuous deployment once the changes have been validated in the test environment they are automatically deployed to production using urban code deploy and this ensures that the changes are released quickly with a minimal risk 
and right after the deployment there will be a monitoring and the feedback once the changes are deployed to production they are monitored using uh, different tools like uh, Splunk, Nagios I can say these tools any issues or errors are automatically flagged and the operation team can quickly address the issues overall I can say like the automation of this process helps to reduce the manual effort speed up the delivery of change and improve the quality of the code being released okay so how this uh, continuous integration works so there is a set of approach so like first what tool do I need to use so you have decided to work on the DevOps. So first thing is uh, which tool you wanted to use, right? So uh, so uh, I can say like you are planning for CI, right? Uh, so choose the right CI tool that suits your project requirements. Uh, thus, some of the tools like uh, Jenkins, uh, Circle CI, or Travis CI. So mostly I can say like most of them use Jenkins. And identify that next is to identify the task of automation like identify the task that can be automated such as like building testing and deploying code then define the build process for your application which includes compiling packaging and creating a deployable artifacts then you'll be writing a unit test uh, to ensure the quality of the code it will help in detecting issues early in the development process itself and then choose the right source control tool uh, choosing the right source control tool that can be integrated with the CI tool that you have selected and then you have to set up the CI tool and configure it to monitor the source control tool okay then next configure the build process you uh, configure the build process uh, to build test and package the application then schedule the build scheduling the builds to run at a particular time such as nightly builds or build triggered or whenever there is a change in the code so these are all the settings that need to be done and then monitor the builds we need to monitor build to ensure that they complete successfully if there are failure or take corrective actions immediately then improve the build process Continues improve the build process by adding more tests, automating more tasks, and integrating more tools. So this is how you need to plan. Okay, so let's talk about the CI tool. One of the uh, let's say we have selected Jenkins as a CI tool. Okay, so Gen I can say like Jenkins is a powerful. Uh, I can say like the popular open source automation. A server uh, that helps in building testing and deploying software projects it is designed to automate the entire software delivery process from code integration to the deployment of the final product Jenkins provides a platform for continuous integration and continuous delivery of a software uh, project okay uh, let's say let me give you a simple example of how Jenkins uh, can be effectively used or to explain in detail so imagine you are a cake baker okay and uh, you have to bake 50 cakes or let's say like uh, 25 cakes every day okay so what you will do you will you will mix the ingredients for each cake manually bake it in the oven check if it's ready take it out and repeat the process for every cake so let's say I have as I said like 25 or 50 cakes so you need to repeat 25 to 50 times the same process so what we did we mix the ingredients for the each cake manually bake it in oven check it if it is ready and take it out right so it will take a lot of time and effort to do this manually now imagine you have a machine that can mix the ingredients bake the cake and uh, check if it is ready take it out and do it all over again and again again, uh, again for every cake this machine will save a lot of time and effort right similarly in software development Jenkins is like the that machine that can automate repetitive tasks involved in building testing and deploying software projects for example whenever a developer commits a new code to the pro uh, project so Jenkins can automatically build the code run test 
to make sure everything works as expected and deploy the code to the production environment. So the outcome, this saves time and effort for the development team and ensures that the software is always up to date and functional. Right. So in a typical software development project, so developers write code, commit it to the shared code repository such as Git. Jenkins monitors this repository for changes and when it detects new code, it automatically builds, tests and deploys the application. This process ensures that the code changes are integrated and tested frequently and this will help in reducing the risk of introducing errors and improving the quality of the final product. Okay, so this is about the Jenkins. Now let's understand about the Docker. Okay, so what is a Docker? A Docker is a tool that helps you create a container for your application. Think of a container as a box that has a, that has everything uh, your application needs to run inside it, like uh, all the necessary files, libraries, and even the operating system. With the Docker, you can easily create this container, move them around the different machines and run them without worrying about compatibility issues. It's like shipping your application in a box that can run anywhere regardless of the underlying infrastructure. Okay. Let's say if you let's say if there is a web project, so Docker can be used to package and deploy the web application as a container. And uh, as I said, so the pro, there, uh, in the bro, Docker, there would be a set of process. First, they would be creating a Docker file and then they would create a Docker image and then they would be composing the Docker. So there will be a set of process. So that would make the deployment easily. OK, so th this is about the Docker. And the next is a Kubernetes. What is a Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a tool that helps manage and or orchestrate containerization application. Think of it like a conductor of a symphony orchestra where each containerization application is a musician. Kubernetes ensures that each musician plays their part correctly, communicates with the other musicians and adjust to changes in the performance. It can automatically scale up or down based on demand and more applications to different parts of the orchestra as needed. In, in, essentially, Kubernetes helps ensure that your application runs smoothly and efficiently in a containerized environment. Right. Okay. Let me tell you another uh, a simple example. Let's say Kubernetes uh, can be compared to a traffic police officer. Okay. Just like a traffic police officer manages the flow of vehicles on a busy road. Kubernetes manages the flow of applications and services in a complex IT environment. It ensures that the right amount of resources are allocated to each application or service and that they are running smoothly and without interruptions. It also helps to balance the workload across multiple servers or nodes so that if one server fails, the other can take over seamlessly. In essence, Kubernetes is a tool that helps to simplify and automate the management of applications and services in a complex IT environment. Okay. What is Ansible? Ansible uh, is a tool used in DevOps for configuration management, application development, and automation. It simplifies the process of managing servers, network devices, cloud infrastructure by allowing you to write code that defines the desired state of your system and then automatically applies the code to achieve the state. For example, let's say you want to install a web server on a group of servers. With Ansible, just you can write a playbook that describes the software you want to install, the configuration settings you want to apply, and the servers that you want to target. So Ansible then uses some SSH to connect to those servers execute the necessary commands to install and uh, configures the web server and report back with the status success or failure to the operations. And this will allow us to manage man infrastructure at scale without needing to manually configure each server individually, right? So it's a huge saving time, right? So that, this is so powerful tool, okay? So finally, so just to give a simple example, like what are the different tools? Uh, uh, 
used in the DevOps like Jira, Git, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Selenium, Nagios, ELK, Stack, and Slack. So there are various other tools that uh, are used, but just I'm giving you one quick example so that you need to be familiar with, okay? Talking about the mainframe DevOps, so I haven't yet started on this. So in the next video, I'll be giving you an, uh, uh, I can say like information about this mainframe DevOps, like how this uh, uh, Broadcom has already started on this for many years they have been researching and they are already implemented and they have prepared for many of the customers and uh, we, uh, we can also see the BMC uh, Compuware uh, mainframe DevOps and uh, there is a open mainframe project Zoe so where you can access there and you can see you can utilize the tools and uh, how they are used and uh, uh, they are very effective and uh, I'm sure like in the upcoming months and years. So these tools will hit a lot and uh, you, as you can see most of the organization will be slowly adopting to it. Okay. So in the next video, I'll uh, give an, uh, I'll try to explain like how these are used. May, may not be in detail, so, but I'll try to cover what uh, in, a, in a very simple way. Okay. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this uh, video. If you, find this is helpful uh, please do share and subscribe if you to my channel if you haven't so i'll be coming up with more and more updates on the mainstream sites thank you so much have a wonderful day